welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm going to do something today. I've been, I've been trying to do this for so long. I've been doing research. I've been collecting things. And uh, this is going to be part one of a series. Part one of a series. And here's what it's called. Magic and the Cinema. Magic and the Cinema. You know, here's the thing. In a nutshell. In a nutshell. Ma magicians took to early cinema, whether it was the magic lantern or the projector or some of the other paraphernalia that's associated with the, the history of filmmaking, they gravitated to it. In fact, the, the early filmmakers, think George Méliès, right? The early filmmakers, David Devant, the early filmmakers were magicians. They were all magicians. They were exploring the idea that you can create magical effects with this newfound uh, technology called film, motion pictures, living pictures, they used to call it. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a history. I'm going to come right up to the point where magicians begin to embrace filmmaking as a performance art. I'm not even sure. Though, those who have, are, are making millions and millions of dollars in the film industry right now, if you said, hey, you know what? Your roots are in magic. Your roots are in the performance art of magic. I'm not sure how, how, how they would embrace that, but it's true. It's true, folks. So let me give you a little bit of history. In the 1600s, the 1600s, the magic lantern was invented. This here is a magic lantern. Now, it's not a very good magic lantern. If this were a good magic lantern, it would have a brass cover over the lamp here. This is a, this is a uh, standard lantern. It's uh, filled with kerosene. It lights and it's covered with a brass, it's covered with a brass tube. And the brass tube has has a a focal point that comes up here now this is this is a slide basically a colored slide that goes in here and then it projects against the wall it's called a magic lantern and this was uh, used in home entertainment and theatrically for many years from the 1600s up through the 19th century and magicians began to experiment with ways to create aberrations in, in a theatrical sense using the magic lantern and other types of, of spiritualists and other types of magical effects using the magic lantern. So that was that came along in the 1600s. In, eight, in 1817, Sir John Herschel bet a friend that he could show the head and tail of a shilling at the same time. When Herschel spun the coin on the table, his friend saw that the spinning sides of the coin fused into a single image. The phenomena became known as the persistence of vision. The persistence of vision. And that provided the foundation, folks, for modern filmmaking. That's where it was born, 1817. In 1824, Peter Mark Roget, or Peter Mark Roget, uh, defined persistence of vision as the ability of the retina to retain an image of an object for 1120 to 1 15th of a second after its removal from the field of vision. It's very important. When you watch a movie, you're not seeing what, it, what you're seeing an illusion. You're seeing an illusion because it's, it's a series of still images that go by in such sequence, in such speed that it appears to be moving. And so it's your, your natural persistence of vision that makes this possible. In 1825, the Talmatrope was invented by John Ayrton Paris. It's a disc with a picture on each side, and when you spin the string, the picture appears to animate. This is an example right here. So what you have here, let's see, let me get this right for you, okay. So what you have here is, uh, is a Victorian woman on this side uh, wearing, wearing undergarments, and on this side you see is uh, a dress with nobody in it. If I spin it, if I spin it just so, she appears to dress. <laughs> she appears to dress. And so, uh, by the way, David Parr does a pretty interesting uh, trick using this concept 
from way way back in 1825 this this was this was a practical application of persistence of vision 1825 in 1832 the fenakistoscope fenakistoscope was invented now i don't have an example of that to show you but what this was it was a disc about that size and it had it had a sequence of images on it and here's what you had to do with this thing though check this out this is probably why it's not continues to be popular today uh it's by the way phenakistoscope fen, is from a greek word meaning deceitful deceitful viewer deceitful viewer uh, it was the first device to demonstrate the illusion of animation this really didn't demonstrate animation okay but this, uh, this device actually did because you saw actual moving pictures. But, uh, but it, was, it was, by the way, it was so revolutionary at the time, some people considered it to be witchcraft. Isn't that interesting that people consider it to be witchcraft what is particularly innovative in the magic field or the entertainment field? A, uh, a slid disc with sequential images mounted on a handle. Spin the disc and nothing unexpected happens. But if you spin the disc viewed in a mirror you can see the actual animation so you actually have to look at the disc through a mirror to see the animation in 1834 the zoetrope was invented 1834 this is a zoetrope right here i don't know if you can see inside but uh, inside i have there's a sequence of images and what you do with this is you look through the slots so you can see the image and you spin it and you spin it and what you see is the movement you see the the sequential images moving so this eliminated the need for a mirror and it's oh it's just fascinating even today to see this uh, if you don't have one of these you really should get one they're, they're available 1833 in 1892 Edison and Dixon invented a motion picture camera with a peephole viewing device called a kinetoscope. Kinetoscope, 1892. In 1895, Francis Jenkins and Thomas Armat developed a motion picture projector device, which they called the Fantascope. It was publicly demonstrated in Atlanta in September of 1895 at the Cotton States Exposition. In 1896, 1896 magicians added living pictures to their repertoire and i'm going to stop there that's part one we're going to pick up part two at some point in the future i'm going to pick it up in 1896 this is where you get george Melies coming on the scene you get david devant bringing uh bringing living pictures into the egyptian hall and uh and you know what you know what is so fascinating to me uh, the motion picture industry was born in magic and magicians gravitated to it and many magicians became unbelievably wealthy in the motion picture industry in the early days but it signaled significant changes I mean the great the great golden age the age of vaudeville was eaten alive when motion pictures took over from an economic point of view people that ran theaters they could, they could get a, a film in there, show the same film over and over again, make the same amount of money as bringing live entertainment in. It was a no-brainer, folks. It was a no-brainer. It completely changed the entertainment industry. Folks, thank you so much for joining me. I'm glad that you did. Please comment down below. I love your comments. Please subscribe if you've not done so already. Thank you so much. Have a great day.